on their side. So neck rolled forward. Okay, no. Want to make sure they're on their side. Uh, this bottom leg extended, top leg bent. Yeah, if there's some issue in the hip or the knee, you might offer to put something underneath their knee. Right? You okay? Or would you like something underneath? My shoulder. They're forcing this on you. <laughs> Just to show and think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's under the knee. Right? Are you comfortable now? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you need a little extra cushion. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of things. First, we're going to start with a nice stretch. So we're going to come over and just have a nice stretch. So the whole thing here is to try to keep uh, the arm, excuse me, legs even uh, with the table. So you just want to have a nice pull. So this is a nice natural position to grab the arm. Sometimes when you do this, it's a little bit too much on the person's wrist. You can negotiate that with the person while you're working on. So then we're going to come around, and we're just going to have a seat. I love this. <laughs> so, like this. Okay. And we're just going to start with some nice compressions. That doesn't feel good. My laziness made me sit down. <laughs> I like to be up like this. That way you can use your body weight a little bit more. And we're compressing right into the side of the head. Now this sideline work is all about oh, the gallbladder meridian, which starts on the side of the head and continues right through the side of the torso, the hip, and out the uh, lower lateral compartment of the leg. And uh, just to get in touch with the beginning uh, of the meridian, if you can feel for where your eye the cantus or the opening of your arc comes together and right on the outside of that if you press in you'll feel a little indentation you feel mm -hmm. that is a particular acupressure point that's gallbladder one that's where this meridian starts it's a very good point to help clear the mind a little bit that's why people do that yes of course it makes sense but not as often as they should perhaps <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this beginning of gallbladder meridian. And it zigzags like a crescent moon from the beginning, behind the ear, back and forth. And it continues down into the shoulder. So we're going to start by just doing some nice compression. Compressing on the exhale. Palm of the hand just fits really nice into the temporal area. You want to take that compression to the back of the ear. Okay. And then we're going to come and sit. And sit in a way where not only you're, you're comfortable, but you're adding support to the person you're sitting on. Bye. So, no, no. Uh, so next we're going to do some digital compression up underneath uh, the occipital ridge. So right behind the ear, bony protuberance, which is the mastoid process. You want to come just below that, up underneath the occipital ridge. And you're going to apply thumb pressure as this hand depresses the shoulder. So that you get a nice stretch in the neck as you apply... Someone's chanting? That is the radio. How are you doing, like... The pull when you were doing compression on the head? I'm sorry? Were you doing any sort of like pulling back when you were actually doing compression on the head? No. That, the compression was just down into the head. So you were just holding? Yeah. I was just holding it. I wasn't depressing it. It serves uh, no purpose for compression to the side of the head. But here, what it does, it, it helps open up the point, but it also continues to open up the meridian as it comes down. So you are familiar with occipital ridge, so as you work back and forth in that occipital ridge, you apply digital compression as you depress the shoulder. Okay, and then I'm having my hand open and relaxed, so the fingers are on the opposite side of the neck and the thumb is here so that you can do some nice petrissage. Right into the side of the neck. So anytime you're behind the SCM, and if you could feel your SCM here, if you come right behind it, you'll feel the transverse processes 
of the cervical vertebra. So this SCM uh, works as a good landmark, so right behind it, you know you're on the transverse processes. That's the attachment of levator. But also it gives you a good uh, landmark to start working on the scalenes, right? So you can use that reference to just do petrissage and just bring it out a little bit more and you'll get uh, the anterior, medial, and posterior uh, scalings. And you're going to bring it down to the top of the shoulder. So there's a couple things you can do. You can take your fingers and place them right one-on-one -on, -one on top of the shoulder and this is in the soft tissue here. Okay, for all people who know some acupressure points, there's one point here called gall bladder 21 and it's called shoulder well and it helps relieve tension in the shoulder and the neck. Uh, this happens to be contraindicated if someone's um, pregnant. So finger over finger and then you just do some nice, just try to relax your arm just a little bit, circular friction. And then to get in there a little bit more you can take the arm place it here and secure it. So now you have this open a little bit more and you can roll in there a little bit more. Okay. Now we're going to do again just a few with our fingers intertwined leaning back just to stretch that area out just a little bit more. And again, it's the same premise as we did this morning where our body weight is leaning back. From here, the hands separate and cup the front and the back of the shoulder girdle. And you just do some nice range of motion. One way and the other. Then we're going to let the shoulder girdle fall forward into our hand. And you'll notice here how that makes the vertebral border, or the border of the scapula that's closest to the spine, more prominent. So starting just below the superior angle, and again that's the point of attachment for levator as it comes up, we're going to hook our fingertips up underneath the vertebral border. And we're going to bring the scapula back until it sits on our fingertips and then we're just going to shift to the side. And that really helps open up that scapula. Scapula has a tendency to get glued on the back of the rib cage, so that helps create some nice space. It's also dangerous too because if you slip, <laughs> it's always nice to have a sense of danger in your work. It keeps you more focused. <laughs> scapula by bringing the arm up and slightly forward and then off to the side. This really stretches the uh, pec minor. Okay, this also, you know, the yin meridians of the arm, lung, pericardium, and heart start in and around the chest. So this really helps not only open up the yin meridians of of the arm, but it also helps stretch the pec minor, which is one of the uh, stronger motivators that brings the shoulder out of balance anteriorly. So because of its strong connection to the coracoid process. Stretches okay? And then slowly back. Okay. And then we're going to continue, because the gallbladder meridian starts here, comes in front of the shoulder, and it runs down the side of the torso through the hip right out the fourth toe. So after here, we're going to start with just some simple compression, which is just <coughs> compressing into the side of the torso. Now in compressing inside of the torso, as you start working down, you'll start coming into the floating ribs. Okay. So the floating ribs don't have as much intrinsic support 
as the rest of the ribs because they have no connection via costal cartilages to the sternum. So when you come to the floating ribs, easier pressure. But then you want to address the soft tissue just below the 12th rib and above the iliac crest all in here. So one way of doing that is by what's called dragon's mouth, which is an overlay of your hands in this position like this so that you can take an inhale please sink right into the soft tissue there, in that space between the 12th rib and the iliac crest pressure's okay? it's okay I can feel your lunch <laughs> so after that we're just going to spend a little time with our thumbs and we're going to sink right into uh, the musculature of the lower back. Okay. So here, you know, you're dealing with um, lateral border of longissimus, um, multifidus, uh, and also quadratus lumborum if you venture out a little bit more laterally. So this is a nice way uh, to work into the musculature of the lower back. And then we're going to venture into the hip, but let's just stop there. We'll just do a little short right after lunch, make sure that we can retain that as we're trying to digest. Just a short thing. Because as I look out, this is what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to well, make we're it all looking on our side. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's just do that much, okay? And we'll do both. Uh, we'll do one side. Two sides? Ah, not heck. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's go for it. Okay, so. So here, we do this, now we're going to come into the hip. Now, the hip, you want to be able to address the hip uh, in a fashion where you, first of all, you're aware of the bony landmarks of the hip. So you want to palpate for the greater trochanter of the femur and the lateral border of the sacrum. So our compression, both with our palm and our thumbs and our elbow, are going to be concerned, again, with this crescent moon shape of soft tissue. Right? So you're working on the soft tissue, not the bone. So you can come up on the table and using the palm of your hand, you can just sink right into the side of the hip. Pressure's okay? Yes. You want to position yourself so that your hara, your center, is over the area you're working on. So you do some nice palmer compression. I use the greater trochanter as a pivoting point, like I put my fingers over there and I'm just using that as a pivot point, so I'm just circularly going around it, sinking in on the exhale. And then I'm just going to go again with thumb over thumb, you get a little bit more specific now. <laughs> And then straight down. <laughs> Pressure's okay. That's it that much. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> and then after that, a little forearm. It's okay. So again, your forearm just sinks an elbow right into that soft tissue. Now you can stay up on the table and just compress the leg or else you can switch sides, whatever is better for you. Because what we want to address now is this, in a sideline position, the gallbladder meridian again coming right out the side of the leg. So again, greater trochanter, sinking in. This is a lot easier 
a body mechanic wise you can just sink in really well you can even use your forearm if you like but it's usually pretty tight here so I like to use a, a larger uh, compressive surface so that it's not as intense it's also a strange angle too right? hmm? Uh, that's why I asked if they needed a compression, but it can be. It can be. So that's why usually I work with something underneath their knee to take Do that you ever pressure. Sit underneath? Hmm? Like sit in between? Sit in between, you mean? Like where their leg is like on your left? Uh, sometimes in the floor I do, but not on the table. Because in the table, this lower portion, what I like to do is this. So this, I can use my weight a little easier. The pressure's okay? Mm -hmm. And it's nice to get a, a sense of how to use your knee in the work. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons uh, this lower table allows you to use different uh, body parts. It's a lot easier on your own dynamic. <clears throat> so you want to take that down. And then the source point, and y'all come over here closer, Chris. The walk will do you good, help you digest your food. Uh, the source point, may I do this? Yes. For the gallbladder meridian, the meridian comes in front of the, uh, of the malleolus and right at the bottom. There's a little indentation here, and this is gallbladder 40. And you let me know if there's a dull ache there. There's an ache there. Okay, so that's where you want to do the source point, right in there. And you want to hold that for like two or three complete breaths. Wow, it hurts. Inhale and exhale and so on and so on and so forth. And then coming out of that dorsal compression right into the top of the foot and then right out the fourth toe. Okay, that's gallbladder meridian. And this is sock. Mm. <laughs> okay. Footsie in sock. Full <laughs> service? Yes. Yeah. It comes with the price of the uh, workshop. <laughs> we'll all have our socks put on. Okay. So that's gallbladder. So, and then we're going to finish by coming up the leg. Okay. So compress down one side, and now we're going to compress up. So we're just going to compress into the foot, into the leg. And again, how you position your hands is up to you. I mean, you could use your foot if you wanted to. But I want you to try to be focused on using your body as clear and clean as possible. So nice extension and allowing your body weight to sink into the soft tissue. I love working uh, the legs and sideline because they're so open and so supported. You take that compression up, a very light pressure into the side of the knee, and very light pressure just above the knee because of the strong attachments of the adductors. It's pretty sensitive right in here usually. So easy compression. But as you venture up in here, in this nice area here, it's really nice to add another sense of compression so you could either use the palm of your hand pressure's okay? Yes. You could use the arch of your foot. It's okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> your eyes got a little buggy there. Right? It's okay now? Yes, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Or else you can use your knee. It's okay. It's okay. to try to bring some sense of sensitivity to your pelvic floor. <laughs> because what you're trying to feel for is their pulse. Right? And it's interesting, the quieter you allow yourself to get, 
then all of a sudden you start noticing more things. And one of the things is that pulse. You feel the pulse. And then you wait until the pulse starts to slow down a little bit. In Thai massage, they call it blood stop, even though it doesn't completely stop the blood. But it uh, slows it down enough so that there's a slight back pressure, so that when you come off of it, the blood rushes through and it helps clear the channels out. And it's quite lovely. stretch, which is taking this top leg, and there's uh, several ways of doing this. One of them is just placing your hand here at the sacrum small of the back and just bringing the leg back. You could use the side of your body and bring the leg back. Is that okay? That's fine. Too much? No, it's fine. Okay, let your leg relax just a little. could use your mm. foot, whatever is good for you. Wow, it's okay? Very good. Yeah. <laughs>